Uh, then I would like to go to the next speaker, and uh, Carla Freit is, uh, is not uh, available, so uh, Mr. Hulsher, Hulsen from PAC will uh, take the floor. Well, I understand that I have uh, four minutes more. <laughs> um, well, thanks for the introduction. Um, I will tell you something about efficient fat and oil removal in a new type of uh, anaerobic reactor, the so-called uh, anaerobic flotation reactor. I will present results from a pilot to the prototype and then to the full-scale uh, implementation of that technology. Um, the anaerobic flotation reactor is designed for wastewaters uh, with, con with COD concentrations between 5 and 70 grams per liter. We can treat high concentrations of fat. Um, we have uh, installations where the fat COD can make up to 42% of the total COD in the wastewater. And generally it's for, uh, uh, well, VSS, degradable solids, proteins, well, and of course, fat. Um, example for industries producing those uh, uh, kind of wastewater is uh, the food industry. Well, there you have the dairy industry, milk production, cheese production, yogurt. Uh, we have transport of liquid foods and then cleaning of the tanks, transporting those foods, olive oil production, and uh, slaughterhouse and rendering plants. Well, why uh, uh, using the AFR technology? Well, if you uh, consider those wastewaters, then they are mostly 5 to 70 grams per liter, too diluted for CSTR, a digester. Um, the volumes will be very huge because there's no sludge retention. In fact, the sludge retention time equals the hydraulic retention time. And, well, the effluent of that uh, digester will contain considerable amounts of, of solids. Um, and on the other hand, for uh, anaerobic granular reactors, it's, it's mostly too concentrated. Well, let's say everything above uh, 20 grams per liter has to be diluted either uh, by recirculation of, of aerobic effluent or dilution, other dilution streams. And, uh, well, if you have uh, fat in the system, then you get problems, especially with your granules floating. And if you have too much solids, then it can lead to uh, granule disintegration, and that will also lead to, to wash out. That's why we apply uh, uh, in that particular gap in fat-containing wastewaters, the anaerobic flotation reactor. Well, afraid of fat in your wastewater? Well, there are reasons for that. And this can be toxic, effect, uh, toxic effects due to long-chain fatty acids. That can be mass transfer limitations due to, the, to, to a layer formation of fat around the granules. That can also lead to floating of the biomass due to integrated gas production. And, well, if you wash out your biomass and you uh, maintain the same load, then you get a, can risk an overload of your system. And finally, that will result in, in reduced biogas production. So the pretreatment, especially for, for granular systems, is a bottleneck. Um, do we have a laser? Yes. Well, let me explain you uh, uh, how, how that technology works. We have, um, we have a flotation with biogas. Well, let me start here. We have a flocculent biomass in the reactor. This is mixed due to uh, risers and downers. We inject biogas in here. And that creates a density difference, so you get a suction flow and you mix the compartment. We also have risers. Well, they work the other way around. And from there, we take a, a stream and put it into the integrated flotation unit at the bottom. And here we have, we call it white water. This is a recycled effluent pressurized with biogas, around 5 bar. And here we get a pressure drop, so it gets, gives an expansion and we create small bubbles. And those bubbles attach to the flocculent biomass and lift them up. So the biomass will just flow over the edge back into the reactor, it's mixed again, and the clean effluent is taken out here. As I said, part of it is recycled and the rest is discharged. Um, well, that way we can uncouple the sludge retention time from the hydraulic retention time. And, uh, well, hydraulic retention times can be a day, two days, and sludge retention times, well, right above 20 days, up to 50. We don't need any chemicals for, for flotation purposes, uh, unlike in a DAF unit, for example. Well, we don't have any smell due to a closed system. Um, as I said, good, re good retention of, of, of sludge, solids, and fats, and therefore a high conversion of, of those components. 
Um, to give you an impression about the biomass, here you can see an Imhoff, uh, well, you see flocculent, fluffy material here under a microscope, and here you can see the reactor content and the effluent. Why is it interesting to uh, transform fat into biogas and not just uh, dis uh, well, dump it somewhere? Well, it contains considerable amounts of, of biogas, more than carbohydrates, and in there it also contains more methane than, than, than the other components, which, well, is in fact energy or heat or both. And uh, to give a small uh, example on that, if you have... Uh, uh, this is basically an example of the full-scale installation. I will show you pictures later. If you have approximately 4,400 kilograms COD with 33% of fat COD, given that fat is approximately two times uh, the COD, then you get 740 kilograms uh, uh, fat per day. Well, the table I just showed you, I get approximately one cubic meter of methane per kilogram of fat. Well, this is an energy content of 4,400 kilowatt hour per day and, well, almost 3 million uh, kilowatt hour per, per year. So the biogas production from that uh, 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 CUD content is approximately 1,700 cubes per day, and this one you can put in an oven and, well, you can produce heat, for example. That will save you uh, uh, money because you don't need to buy natural gas, well, approximately 186,000 uh, euros per year um, at 30 cents uh, uh, per cube. Or you use it in a, in a CHP, combined heat power plant, and you produce electricity at 10 cent that will generate approximately 170,000 euro per year. Well, and you can produce some heat which you can put in your process or use for other purposes, drying, whatever. Um, well, as you can see that the energy uh, uh, generated from the fat is up to 43% of the total caloric value of the, of the, of the overall CUD. And if you take the electricity consumption of the, of the system itself, then you have 3 to 5% of the overall caloric value uh, uh, of, the, of the CUD and the biogas. Well, conventional solutions to treat fat-containing wastewaters will, yeah, can, be, can look like that. You have the wastewater, you put it in a buffer, you use a skimmer in case you have, uh, for example, solid fats, uh, coconut butter, that, that becomes solid uh, uh, at lower temperatures. So you need an, an, extra tank, oh, an extra tank for that. And then uh, you have to, so you remove those, those solid parts. You have still wastewater with suspended fat. You put that into a duff. Well, you add polymer. You get a flotate, rich in fat, of course, and an effluent with SCUD. Well, still you have those problems. You have the flotate and the solid fats. You have to dispose that. Well, that can cost you uh, 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 transport costs, and you have the effluent SUD, which costs you discharge costs. If you want to skip that cost factor, then you need to add, for example, a granular sludge reactor. Well, then you can treat uh, the wastewater uh, 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 with, with SUD. Well, maybe you need some desulfurization, you make biogas, and you have an effluent. Still, you have solid fats, flotate, and of course you add polymer. So if you want to skip this, then you need to add maybe a CSTR, and still, some, you can remove uh, 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 H2S, you make biogas, and, well, you still have the polymers. What we propose is this solution. You just take the solid fats, maybe in a tank you heat it to make it fluid, and then you dose it to the reactor, and you have the wastewater with suspended fats. You also add that. Due to the integrated flotation unit, you have a good conversion. Uh, well, you get the clean effluent, and you produce biogas. Um, we made some pilots uh, on the way for the, to the full-scale implementation. Um, oh. Yeah, this one is the, is the pilot unit, uh, 180 liters. So what we achieved is good sludge retention um, at around uh, 25 grams per liter biomass in the reactor. Hydraulic retention time around two days at the sludge retention time of around 55 days. High loading rates, 8.5 kilogram, of which 2.5 kilogram fat COD per cubic day, which is quite high, and the TCOD efficiency was an average uh, 92%. To show you a graph of that uh, uh, pilot trial, here you see the uh, COD efficiency, well, right around above 90%, and the red one is the load, well, increased over the pilot trial, and here we achieved uh, uh, higher than 8, and this was also the design basis for the prototype. Well, here below you can see the hydraulic tension time 
as I said, around two days. Um, when we look at the fat concentrations, then we see a fat influent concentration of approximately four grams, six grams, well here one, 10 grams. And the effluent concentrations were right around 30, 40, 50 milligrams per liter, um, whereby the fat in the reactor was slightly higher, that uh, is due to some absorb absorption uh, to the biomass. Well, and that results in a, in a quite high uh, fat removal efficiency, right around, well, 80, 97, 90, 99%. Um, well, after that pilot trial, we uh, built a prototype, 500 cube. Um, that was at the, at the company ITC, that's a tank cleaning company. Well, they have a wide range of, of wastewater, uh, soya oil, butter, tomato, ketchup, vinegar, everything. And in fact, well, I don't know if you can see it very well. This one is our influent. This one is the installation in OS, that's the anaerobic flotation reactor. And here are some full scale data. Well, you will notice that the volumetric loading rate is not 8 as designed but, uh, well, quite low, around one. Well, that's, there's not more COD available, and we have to do it with this. And, uh, well, the uh, COD efficiency would be an average around 90%. If you look at full-scale uh, fat removal data, then you see almost the same picture as in the, in the, in the, in the pilot. Well, we have uh, influent concentrations around of, of fat around 1,000, 1,500 milligrams per liter. And um, in the effluent, well, it's low, a few milligrams. In the reactor, also here, slightly higher due to absorption. That will also result in a quite high fat removal efficiency. Another pilot we did on the way to the full scale was at uh, Ben & Jerry's at Unilever. And also here, we achieved a good sludge retention, 20 grams per liter, hydraulic retention time, three days. The load was even higher, 9.4 kilograms, and also the fat loading, volumetric loading rate was higher, like three kilograms per cube per day, that's quite high. And the TCD and SCD efficiency were like 96 and 97 percent in average. Here are some data of the, of the pilot trial. Well, you see the volumetric loading rate slowly increasing, here reaching the eight. This one was an overload, then we had Christmas, and then we started, uh, uh, we tried to start it as quick as possible back to eight, uh, um, and well, that, that worked out, and then we finalized around eight, so design value for that reactor was 8.5 kilograms per cube per day. Um, here you can see the fat volumetric loading rate and the efficiency definitely quite high. Um, fat analysis from that pilot was also here influent 4.1, 5.9 grams per liter in the reactor, lower but slightly high or higher than in the effluent but still resulting in a very well, very good fat removal efficiency. Well, this is how we started there. That was the pilot at the uh, on-site at uh, Unilever in Hellendorn. Then, yeah, I'm playing, playing hockey in the dad. Then we thought, okay, we could make something like that from it. Uh, here we have buffer tanks, then we have the uh, 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 flotation reactor and an aerobic polishing. And then we build it like this, well, that looks almost the same. Here you can see it from another side. That's marketing to paint it. And here we have some, we recently started it up two months, two months ago. And uh, what you can see, the volumetric loading rate, well, we started low, the, the, the red dots, and then we increased it here. And well, we reached here, let's say the eight kilogram per cube per day. There's slightly lower uh, COD uh, supply at the moment. Um, also the fat, uh, the volumetric loading rate based on fat is here around, well, let's say 1.5, something like that. And the TCD efficiency, the guarantee value was 90%. Well, this is what we reached here. So we go on with that. Um, well, as a summary, uh, the biopack, AFO, how much time do I have? Still enough? Um, the biopack AFR works well on fat containing wastewaters with uh, high VLRs up to 8 kilograms per CD uh, per cube per day, whereby uh, fat can contribute to a major part of the load, as I, as I showed you, and also to a major part of the energy you, you can produce. Um, the technology was proven, well, in two pilots, in a prototype, and now in a full scale, and it can be applied to gain biogas out of concentrated streams. Until now, there are three uh, full-scale applications. One is in, in, in China. Well, I left this out now. 
and well, mind the benefits, get power from fat and grease in your wastewater, and uh, that's how I want to finish. Does anyone have a clarification question? Yes, one question. I have a beautiful microphone here for you. Uh, here, in the, here in the front. Uh, what is the sludge yield of the system? So how much uh, sludge is produced per kilogram of organic? Well, it's around anaerobic systems, like 0 0.05 kilograms VSS per kilogram COD removed. How much, sorry? 0 0.05, 5%. Okay. If you look at, at the, the retention time, if you would just compare it to a normal uh, 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 two systems, uh, sludge uh, digester and, and, and the high uh, loaded anaerobic, the retention time uh, is much bigger than if you would do it separate. So what is the advantage uh, if, if the sludge yield is the same? Um, well, if, 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 you, if, you, if you would treat that wastewater in a digester, then you need huge volumes. And here, as I said, we uncouple the hydraulic retention time. That can be one day, but the sludge retention time can be 50 days. Yeah, but if I look at the, at the digest, the sludge retention time is 50 days. The effect content is 5% of the total. So if I have 95% which I can run in 18 hours in a high-loaded system, and the 5% is 50 days, if I add those two, then I come to one day of retention time. The systems you're showing are two or three days of retention time. Ah, but well, then you have, you have now you have only one system and not three different, like a DAF, like an EGSB, and like a digester. If you want to treat the same st stream, then you need, as I showed you that, that picture, uh, a DAF, a CSTR, and another yeah. reactor. So you have three reactors, a lot of maintenance, more work, and this is one. Well, it's easier okay. to prepare food in one, uh, one pan than in three. Okay. But if you look at the total system, it's bigger. It's twice bigger than if you would do it separately. That's how I try. Uh, or do, do no, I understand I well what you're saying? No. I, w I would not say that. Uh, in, in the worst case, the volume would be the same. Okay. Um, you think about this answer for a while. In the discussion, we come back to that. Uh, any more clarification questions, not discussion questions?